Hi guys, it's Danny. Alrighty, today we're gonna discuss about shriveling pseudobulbs and why I think it's not okay to let the pseudobulbs shrivel excessively. So I'll show you a few examples of what can actually happen, I'll explain why it happens, excuse those noises, and then I'll give you some logical assumptions about watering orchids that have very shriveling pseudobulbs. I'll mainly discuss about catacetum orchids because I did have quite a few comments and questions regarding them and I just I just want to add to that video. Alrighty, so as you might know, orchids which have pseudobulbs have this amazing quality to them of actually being flexible, elastic in a way. So if you have an orchid which has shriveled pseudobulbs due to various reasons, when they will rehydrate, they will plump back to some extent. And sometimes, in some cases, it's really amazing how good they actually begin to look, even though they were really shriveled at some point. Now, this doesn't mean that the degree of elasticity is infinite. It doesn't mean that the pseudobulbs that were really, really shriveled will look brand new. There is such a thing as a point of no return. So let's understand what happens when a pseudobulb really, really, really shrivels. Now, the liquid stored in its structures goes away. Pretty much that's why they shrivel up. However, it's not only the stored liquid, it's the actual essence of the pseudobulb as well and the actual cellular wall. If an orchid gets so dehydrated that the wall starts to break down, this can now repair itself. So I'll show you a few examples of how the point of no return of stressing a pseudobulb looks like. So here we have an example. This is one of the brassias that I had. It's it's pretty much a recent purchase this year. Um, so this orchid was really, really sick. It didn't have roots. It is starting to produce roots right now. This pseudobulb that you see here used to be much thinner than this. It is starting to plump back. But look how it looks like. Do you see those spots? Do you see that patching, that dark patching? That's not natural pigmentation. It didn't used to be like that. I believe this is some kind of dead tissue in a way. These are the places where the cellular wall failed. This is the point of no return for a shriveled pseudobulb. Now, this is not the only, let's say, symptom you might see on a very shriveling pseudobulb. I'll show you another symptom. Here is an encyclia orchid. This is that type of encyclia which actually does not like to dry out too much. So when I repotted it, I managed to disturb the roots. I cut away many of the roots. Luckily, this orchid produced some roots, but in the meantime, the pseudobulbs got kind of shriveled. So if you take a look at this particular pseudobulb, you can see this line. I'm not sure if it shows well in camera, but actually this is a split in the pseudobulb. It didn't used to be there, but because I let the pseudobulb shrivel, the elasticity of the outer wall, let's call it, gave up. And actually the pseudobulb split. And this is something you see more often than the previous example that I showed you. I do get quite a few questions on why some pseudobulbs obtain these lines. And it's just a sign of rehydration. So the elasticity of the wall failed right in this point. Now, this doesn't really mean anything. It kind of looks bad, yes. Sometimes it can get infected, but it doesn't happen too much. But it just goes to show you that there is a point of no return in the structure of a pseudobulb. Now, there are cases which look far worse than this. I don't think I have one, but you can actually get a whole pseudobulb with splits or with a very, very big split. And I don't think it's really good to have such a thing. It takes away from how the pseudobulb will perform. It does look bad. And if it gets infected, obviously it's not very good for the orchid. Now, these were the lighter cases. There are other cases from which a pseudobulb never recovers. And what it does, it, it just goes brown or yellow, falls off. It's not usable anymore. It's not okay to reach that point. It's not very, very common because orchids are quite adapted to withstand some stuff, but it does happen. So there is a big difference between having a slightly shriveled pseudobulb and having one that just looks like a leaf. You are very close to the point of no return and you are very prone to actually losing that pseudobulb. So is that really worth it? In the case of a catacetum orchid, you might not really care because catacetums can actually develop from one single pseudobulb. However, the older pseudobulbs can actually create new growths. So if you lose a pseudobulb, an older pseudobulb, you are practically cutting away the possibility of having new growths on your catacetum orchid. That's one of the downsides, let's call it like that. 
However, when a new growth starts to form, it pulls energy not only from the latest pseudobulb, but also from the older pseudobulbs as well. So if you cut the older pseudobulbs, you will have a functional plant, but I tend to believe that the new growth will have even more energy to grow if it has some more older pseudobulbs, not just one. Now, the debate with Catacetomorchus that I had on a previous video was that hybrids are more tolerant than species, which I agree to fully. And if you try to water a um, species Catacetum when you're not supposed to, you can actually rot it. Again, I agree to that. But when aren't you supposed to water it? Aren't we confusing a little bit this notion? So as I was saying, my Catacetum orchid is asking me for water constantly. It has blooms, so it needs water. It has growing root tips, so it needs water. And if I don't water it, these older pseudobulbs start to get really, really, really shriveled. They get like that only for one reason and one reason only. They spend energy somewhere. They might spend it on the leaves. They might spend it on the flowers. They might spend it with the growing roots. I don't know, they're spending energy if they get really shriveled. On the other hand, this guy didn't ask me for water for the past five days. I didn't water him in, I don't know, almost a week. He's not asking me for water. He's not going super shriveled, he's dormant. Also, the root tips are not growing anymore. So he's not actually spending that much energy anywhere. He doesn't have a flower spike, doesn't even have leaves anymore okay i'm gonna cut the water source for this guy until he will actually really ask me for a little bit of water not sure if that will happen so as i was saying since he doesn't ask for water obviously if i give him water i'm gonna rot something probably because he's not using that water he's not gonna absorb it the roots will not absorb it because the orchid cannot take it everything is pretty plump however the pseudobulb starting to shrivel on this guy means they can take up water. So if I give him water, I know the roots will absorb it and direct it to whatever portions of the plant require water. If the pseudobulbs are really shriveling, they actually require water. And I know that I'm not gonna rub this guy because the roots will absorb water, so the water will not stay for nothing in this pot. So it will actually not rub the plant. The plant does take up the water. In this case, I'm not sure if he's gonna take up the water. He doesn't need it, he doesn't ask for it. So really, no matter if this guy is a hybrid or a species, it tells me the exact same thing. Orchids talk the same language if you want. If a pseudobulb starts to shrivel really bad, he's not dormant, he requires me to give him some water. If the orchid has roots, I'll give that water because he asks me for water. If the pseudobulb will just get these fine wrinkles and then be just fine with it, there's no point in me giving it water. He does not require it. Pretty logical, right? It doesn't matter if this guy is a hybrid or a fussy species. Now, this morning I saw a video from Roy Plant Dharma. I'll add the video right here. Apparently, he started to cut the water source for his catacetums, but the older pseudobulbs were actually shriveling way, way, way too much, so he decided to actually give a bit more water because his orchids apparently were not dormant yet. And if you watch that video, you will see that his catacetums still have some leaves, they have growing root tips, so they still require a bit of water. Now, he's trying to induce dormancy into them, and you can actually induce that. You can cut the water a bit but not completely because you do risk the chance to shrivel those pseudobulbs to the point of no return. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing for catacetums. As I was saying, they can do without back bulbs, unlike oncidiums or catleas. However, I do consider back bulbs an advantage to any orchid, really. I do believe they will develop faster, grow faster. I might be wrong, I just like to have a plan B. If something happens to this pseudobulb, I break it, it rots, whatever, I have the back bulbs. I know my plant can go on because back bulbs can produce new growths. Why would I want to cut the branch under my feet and actually lose the back bulbs or make them unusable? I really don't want to do that. So that's how I think about things. I might be wrong. I always try to find the logic, the benefits of doing stuff. And whenever I say something, I don't say it because I want you to rot your orchids or stuff like that. I say it because it sounds good to me. I apply it. I do it as well. 
Of course, I try to mention as many details as possible in my videos, but I cannot mention everything because I will make a 24-hour video and really nobody wants to watch that. So this is why I ask you guys to actually leave me comments down below so we can discuss further on stuff that I might have not mentioned in the video. But I would just like to clarify this issue with catacetums with shriveling pseudobulbs, even though I don't have enough experience with catacetums, even though I don't have species, which I know they might be quite different from hybrids. This is why I don't say, Pah, I know everything there is to know about the catacetums. And I mention I have hybrids. But when it comes to orchid language, they kind of speak the same language. And whatever I tell you, I don't think is so risky. I actually play it safe most of the times. And when I say, let the orchid ask you for something or tell you what to do, it's really the best thing to do. I don't know what your orchid does. I don't know your growing conditions. But if your orchid asks you for water, why not provide it? It obviously is capable of picking it up, if it has roots, of course. I will not go through the details, but I really hope you get my point, and I really hope you understand why I say some stuff. So, Reddy, thank you for watching this video. I hope it clarified some stuff, and I hope it will help you. If you have further questions for me, just leave me a comment. If you want to discuss more on the subject, leave me a comment down below. And you know I always get back to you, I always answer you. So, if you'd like to see more videos from me, simply subscribe to my channel. I post on a daily basis. Also, you can click on the left side of your screen to be directed to orkinature.com where you will find care sheets, identification sheets, and also you can talk to us in the forum section. And on the right side of your screen, you can click to watch another orchid video. I'll post the tutorial for catacetum orchids in this video. Thank you for joining. I'll see you next time. Bye!